Hello everyone, my name is Manish Sharma. I am a Senior Database Engineer in AWS Redshift. Today I will give you the overview and demo on a new Amazon Redshift feature called Native Identity Provider Federation. In this demo, I will integrate Redshift with Azure AD using Power BI Desktop and JDBC Client SQL Workbench J. These are the prerequisites for this demo. You need to have Microsoft Azure account with admin role, Redshift cluster with latest version from April 22 onwards, Power BI Desktop version Feb 22 release onwards, SQL Workbench, and the latest Redshift JDBC driver. Now let's navigate to Azure portal. Select App Registrations. Click on New Registration. Enter OAuth underscore application as the application name. For redirect URL, choose Public Client Native and enter the redirect URL. Select Register. Now we are in the application. Select Expose an API. Click Set on the right side of the application ID URL. Click Save. Now click Add a Scope. Put Scope Name. I will use Scope Name as JDBC underscore Login. Enter Display Name here. I will use JDBC Login and I will use the same for Description. Click Add Scope. Now we have to register the second application that will be used to retrieve user and group information. Go back to the app registrations. Click on new registration. Enter the application name as redshift underscore client. I will keep the default settings. Select register. Now we are in the client application. Click on certificates and secrets. Click on new client secret. Enter the description. I will put name as idp underscore secret. I will keep recommended settings. Click add. Now we should note down the secret value somewhere because it would only be present one time and after that you cannot read it. Instead of client and secret, customer can choose certificate also. Now next thing we need to add is the API permission. Select API permissions. Click on add a permission. Select Microsoft Draft. Then click application permissions. Type directory.read. And select this one. Click add permissions. Now you will notice the message is not granted. Click grant. Now on the pop-up box, click yes. Permission would be updated with a green check mark. Now let's navigate to home page, select groups, click on new group. We will keep group type as security. I will name group as ETL, add the description as ETL group. Select no member selected, enter the member name which you want to add. In this case, I will add Richard. Select create. Let's navigate to Redshift to create IDP. Now the first thing we need to identify is the token version. We can identify it by navigating to OAuth application. Click on manifest. Now look for value under access token accepted version. If the value is null or one, then application is using V1 token. Otherwise it's a V2 token. This is the SQL syntax for creating the IDP. Here I will name IDP as IDP underscore Azure. For namespace, I will use AAD. For the issuer, we will use this value. Now for the tenant ID, we have to get from the Azure application. Click on overview. Here it is. For audience value, we will copy this multiple audience value as we will use for pay desktop and SQL workbench in this demo. In this value, the first part is static for Power BI desktop. And for application URL, we can get this value from OAuth application. Copy this value. For client ID, we can get from Azure client application. Now for client secret, we have already copied previously to our notepad. Now let's execute this statement. Our IDP is registered now. As a super user, we can view all the IDP using this command. As a best practice, we will create a role in Redshift. Now let's execute create role statement. Now let's grant permission to the Redshift role. Now let's set up Microsoft Power BI Desktop. Here is my Power BI Desktop. 
Select Get Data. In this tab, search for the Amazon Redshift. Select it, click Connect. Now we are on the connector configuration form. For server, you can get the value from your Redshift console. Select Endpoint. Make sure to remove port and database from Endpoint. For database, I will use Dev Database. Click OK and select Microsoft Account. Select Sign In. In this window, enter Microsoft Account Credentials. Once connected, click Connect. You should be able to view data here. If not, then grant relevant permission to Redshift role. Power BI Desktop Setup is complete using Redshift Native IDP. Now let's connect with SQL Workbench J. Here is my SQL Workbench. Put the connection name. For driver, select Amazon Redshift. For the URL, you can get the value from Redshift Console. Copy it. Choose Manage Drivers. Click on Browse. Select all the files from the downloaded JDBC folder. Select OK. Now select Extended Properties. I have pre-filled the Extended Properties. Plugin name is a fixed value. For scope, we can get the value from OAuth application. Select Expose and Open API. Copy the scope value. For Listen Port, use 7890. For IDB Response Timeout, I have put value is 50. For Tenant ID, we can get the value from Overview section. And for the Client ID, we can get the value from the OAuth application Overview. Copy the value. Click OK. Now on the browser, sign in with your Azure AD credentials. You will get successful message on the browser. For validation, you can test using this command. Here is the Microsoft Azure AD user with AD namespace. This is the demo for step-by-step -step native IDP integration of Redshift with Azure AD. Please visit our AWS website to know more about this feature. And also the blog links are there at the end of this page. Thanks for watching.